Hello and welcome. Today is Tuesday, the 16th of February 2016. My name is Chris Ellis and we're here to bring you another daily update on the Full Node project because we like to keep you up to date on these things. I am currently sending to Ollie Morris a copy of uh, the latest version of the Full Node software. It's currently going up via Deluge. I've made a disk image of it. It's got uh, release candidate five of um, Bitcoin QT, um, the core Bitcoin code, and it's been super fast. But Ollie has been having difficulty his end because we've stu he still gets the activating best chain, and so we figured the quickest way to do things was just for me to make an IMG file, put it up on Torrent, and then for him to download it on Torrent. So that's taking place right now. It's going to be about an hour and a half until that's ready. Before I introduce my guests, I just wanted to give a quick update on today's happenings. So today I made uh, a full node from last night. You, you may have seen me last night, four and a half hours making a node, and I owe these guys um, a big credit. And this is Louis Chang here opening up his full node. I've given him a little beta version because he is responsible for that t-shirt that you are seeing there. He designed that t-shirt. Um, you can't see the, the, the pro tip bit because he's covering it with his arm, but he designed uh, those graphics. He was very, very kind of him. He didn't charge us any money for it. And so this is proof of work. They are a media agency in London. They work specifically within the blockchain space. This is an authentic recommendation. Um, I, I, you know, I, I've used them myself, and I would recommend them. And this is Louis Chang, who's quite possibly one of the most talented artists in, in the space as well. And they're very ethical. You know, they think very carefully about who they work for. And so, yeah, we know I was just hanging out, you know, and I sort of um, installed the full node with Rock OS on it um, because we just thought we'd try that out. And uh, what we noticed is that Barclays uh, had a free Wi-Fi available from downstairs. So I was just like, you know, okay, so free Wi-Fi from Barclays. So I thought I'd check out the terms and conditions. And I was like, okay, let's see, section 13, you must not use the service or allow the service to be used in any way which breaks any law or the conditions of any license or rights of others or, or our acceptable use policy, which we may amend from time to time and can be found at this. So I was sort of looking through these terms. I thought, yeah, that's fine, blah, blah, blah. So I did actually, um, you know, take take the time to, so, I don't know if you can see that bit bigger, um, to actually install Bitcoin and have it up and running and have it running over Tor. Um, so there it is. That is a Bitcoin full node running over Tor just above the Barclays Bank um, in London. So Barclays are now distributing uh, transactions over the Bitcoin blockchain, going over their network via Tor by default. And I will show you the script that I use to do that. This thanks to Steve, who's on the call with us. Uh, he posted up this issue in uh, the full node Git repo, which you can find at fullnode.protip.is. That will forge you to this this pay, uh, to the, this repo. And uh, pretty much as he says right here, you can uh, follow these instructions and then add these lines to your Bitcoin comp file. And uh, you can also set to, I think, one of the things that I did as well, just for added security in my little text file. Let me just see if I can read it. It's very, very small. Is um, only, oh yeah, here it is. Only net equals Tor. That's another thing you can, you can add to that. Only net equals Tor, which means that it will only use Tor. It will, it will not use clear net. Um, if that's not available, in case you get kicked off the tour or tour crashes or something. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I sent a little tweet out to Anthony, he works at Barclays, and also David Birch, who you know does a lot of consulting within the banking sector and so forth. And I said, look, I've done a bit of blue sky thinking. I helicoptered in on the problem, hit the ground running. Uh, I was like, Barclays pinged it. I think this could be a real, you know, big deal for Barclays. You know, Barclays pinged it. Um, as we're pinging blocks across the, the, the Barclays internet, and uh, they can't see what's going on, net neutrality. Uh, this is the principle that internet service providers and governments should treat all data as an internet as the same, not discriminate or charging differently by user content, site platform application, type of equipment, or the mode of communication. Uh, it's basically uh, Professor Tim Wu in 2003 as an extension of the long-standing concept of the common carrier. So it's, uh, that's what I thought. I thought, well, you know, why not? So the tour, they can't see what we're doing. It's all encrypted end to end. 
And uh, so that pretty much brings us up to where we are today. So guys, what's what's going on? What 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 have you been working on? I hear there's some some Python code. Steve, that you're. Hey, uh, yeah. Okay. Evening. I've been Evening. Um, I've been working with Ollie. We've, we've knocked up a couple of little scripts. Uh, it's good to, good to see your your crypto anarchy in effect. Yeah. Uh, we've, got, we've got a couple of scripts here that help people. Uh, we've been working on. Um, Interfacing with Bitcoin using Python libraries because the RPC interface is very slow when you access it through the standard HTTP, you know, the default way. So we've installed a couple of additional libraries and uh, got a couple of little scripts that are able to show you uh, balances and send coins across the network. Um, Ollie's been giving us a hand with this. We've been just, you know, just knocking it out this afternoon. Thought it was something that we could uh, give to you guys, so we posted it up as an issue on the uh, on the Git. Okay, that looks good. And so, what what does this particular script do then? The the first script we have is a, a balance script. So it you import a Bitcoin library um, and you import the RPC object, and then we create uh, a, a connection to that object, and then we use that connection to query the Bitcoin RPC and return data to the to the user, the screen, or, or whatever your program's running. So the first the first one we have here, let me show you, is a is a balance script. So we have uh, import Bitcoin. The parameter we're using is for testnet. We then create a, a connection to the Bitcoin RPC, and then we create an object in Python that interfaces with this RPC. We then query the RPC and ask what our balance is, and then we print on the screen the balance and a, and a nice message. So we can see that script here. It runs ever so fast, a lot faster than if you query Bitcoin CLI on the on the Raspberry Pi. Why and, is uh, that? Do you know? No, I'm not sure. Sense. I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if if these libraries are reading the blockchain directly from disk, um, because the data format of it, I imagine, is, is available. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know, but it uses all the RPC commands. So I wonder if there's a lag in the HTTP implementation within Bitcoin Core for the RPC interface. Right, um, and then we have a second script that uh, we've got here, which this script sends coins across the network. So again, we import Bitcoin, and we, we tell it we're using the test net. Again, we've got the RPC connection on the Bitcoin wallet. We then create our object, query our balance, and show that to the user on screen. Yeah, then we have the uh, raw raw input thing that prints out. Please enter your Bitcoin address, and if the yeah. length of the address equals to zero. In, in yeah, print, then, no address supply. Have a nice day. And the program will exit. And if if they enter us an address, we then got to ask them how many satoshis they'd like to send. And then uh, we can send some satoshis across the network with just a single line of code there. It's ever so simple. Uh, just just need an address and an amount. Uh, we can demonstrate that for you right now. So we have a, a Bitcoin test net wallet here with the World Crypto Network test address. So if we get that up on the screen. Uh, I want it display because it's live. Just click on it. I am on. Double clicking. Oh. Show, then push show. Look on that show thing there down the bottom. Oh, show. Sure. Yeah, there we go. So we can click to that address. And if we run that script, send. Right, we have. Quite a few satoshis there. We're going to send some to that address. Why not do, I don't know, 500,000? And you'll see the coins have been sent, the transactions showing in Bitcoin Core. The show is unconfirmed for the moment. And you see it's been broadcast through six nodes. Connection is not great to the testnet and network at the moment, but it should be enough. And, and who's mining on the uh, Bitcoin testnet? Is there a block explorer you can use? Yeah, Blocker, uh, TBTC dot Blocker works. Um, I think the mining is as and when people feel like it, but there's there's an awful lot of blocks. We're up to 700,000 blocks on the testnet because difficulty resets if nobody mines two blocks in a row. So if you, if you fire up a a terahertz miner, you can claim a block in no time, I'm sure. But the, 
like a big I guess one. there's people out there using the test net worldwide, so it's main maintained, you know. Yeah. Um, I think I'm not sure on test net you get 25 or 50. I'm not sure. I think it's 25 Bitcoin. No, I guess there must have been a halving. It's a block of Bitcoin. Block yeah, of Bitcoin. there must have been a halving. Although the yeah, and the, although the test net's been reset three times, so I'm not sure. I'll have not mind on the chat. Okay, so if you if you just paste in the private chat here the the transaction hash of that, I can look it up, can I? And, and you, so send it to me, and then I'll try. Yeah, it absolutely. Up. Um, transaction details. If I get that hash there, and copy, and then. To paste it there. There we go. So if you take that to tbtc dot blocker. Yeah, got it. There it is. Unconfirmed, but there it is. So that's the transaction that you've just sent using the Python library. It's so invented originally by Vladimir uh, Vandalan, who's now the lead developer, and it was picked up by Peter Todd later on. So that's yes. it. Yeah. Just very good. Very, very simple, single line of code, you know, it's ever so easy. That's great. And this is the kind of stuff that we want to be teaching people in the future, especially like uh, tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock GMT. Let me just give you the world time buddy screen grab that I prepared for you. Um, it is very late at night in America. I know a lot of you that watch this show are in America. So, yeah, unfortunately, if you're in New York, it's going to be like 3 a.m., but if you're in San Fran, it'll be midnight. At 8 a.m. GMT, I'm going to be getting ready for a show uh, live with Ajahn, which will be 3 p.m. his time in Thailand to help a young kid get set up with a Raspberry Pi. We're not going to go into like full details of like how to set up Bitcoin that soon. We're first of all just going to get them familiar with the Raspberry Pi and like plugging it in and having the adapters and all of that kind of stuff. Mm. It'll just Showing be very basic. Yeah, getting I mean, the, uh, getting disk imager yeah. and all that stuff. So I'm gonna. So hopefully, yeah, tomorrow morning we should be up and we should be starting to teach people in in these regions uh, how to get involved. Because obviously, you can buy the nodes off of me, or you can just buy the buy the Raspberry Pi yourself. And so what some people have done is just bought them themselves, and and we're happy to help them. We should also have got some news as well in this space, uh, which is that 21 have finally got themselves uh, into gear and are now releasing the in quotes free. 21 Bitcoin library. I say in quotes because nothing's free in this world. Um, they're probably um, currently at this time in user acquisition stage, which means that they're, they're sort of in the growth phase of their uh, development as a startup, which means that they need as many sort of, you know, people in the sales funnel as possible. They need to build a developer community. So anyway, I think it's a good thing overall. Um, I think it's a good thing because it means that we're going to have what looks like a fully featured Python library for Bitcoin, which will allow the use of the famous HTTP code 402, uh, which currently gives you an error, of course, in most browsers because nobody uses it. But the, the idea eventually is that we use the code um, as a way of transmitting uh, Bitcoins over, over this particular uh, protocol and so of course they want your email because they've got a mailing list and they've got a marketing agenda and they've got all of these you know customer acquisition metrics we don't have any of those we don't have a mailing list and we're not going to spam anybody but we do welcome the fact that we will finally have a command line interface that is open source or at least I hope it's open source so if they don't actually and they say anything about the license right here so I don't know if it could be MIT or GNU or whether it will be conditionally free software we don't know yet um, but hopefully, yeah, that will be on its way soon and that will support the effort to decentralize all the things. And, and um, yeah, so that's that's the update. So it's about the Q Bitcoin bit time thing. Yeah, so how are you getting on downloading? 32% are done, almost. Okay, and what does it, it say says, the estimated time is? It says um, an hour and 11 minutes left, but I think it'll be less than, I think it'll be about 40 minutes or something. Because it's at some point already it's only been about 20 minutes half an hour yeah well we probably I think um, we're probably going to slow it down with our YouTube channel but I would also say a couple of things about this new version of Bitcoin it's not without its controversies it does have a controversial feature called uh, RBF replaced by fee which um, intends to uh, help to unstick 
transactions that have low miners fees. Unfortunately, it has some usability issues along with it, um, which means that um, it, it, uh, if a merchant you know, doesn't ask you to, to use RBF and you do as a sender, that they, they, they have to, they are forced to wait uh, until they get one confirmation. It basically makes zero conf uh, transactions um, null and void. So the decision that's been made by Core so far is to put this in the command line interface of Bitcoin Core only, not in the GUI, which means that a very limited number of people are going to be using RBF. It'll probably just be used by programmers and developers who just want to experiment with it initially until we have a better usability uh, method at, on the front end. And so I think that was on balance the right the right decision. Um, both sides of the debate can can be happy with that. And yeah, and also to say that we're having a lot of fun uh, using Jesse and the new version of Bitcoin. It's running a lot faster than the original version. And so I will be sending out um, you know free vouchers for anyone who bought a full node. You'll be able to to upgrade. We'd love it if you could send us a tip just to help us cover the postage. But we'll send you a new memory card. The memory cards are ridiculously cheap now um, they're sort of you know less than three pounds and if, if I catch them on a good day and I buy them in enough quantities and so I think that's kind of affordable enough and also want to keep the spirits up uh, you know want a big shout out to everyone that's supported us it's been really good now so I want to keep that energy alive and I want people to be using the latest software and um, so yeah I'd, I'd like to offer everyone a free, a free upgrade if you if you want to help also you know you can just download the image that we'll be making available once this one is ready, Ollie's downloading the prototype now. Um, anyone else is free to download it. I'll put it up on BitTorrent. I can post the link in the description below. But it's not actually finished yet, so only do it if you just want to well, experiment. Whether well, you get the Jesse operating system and new Bitcoin 0 0.12, then. Yeah, yeah, and actually, there's another version of Bitcoin. There's, a, there's an RC6, I think, today. Or I saw BTC Drack did. Um, did a post on Twitter just now saying that another change has been made. So, yeah, uh, check sequence uh, verify mempool has been merged into Bitcoin Core according to Drac. So that looks like there's probably another version of Bitcoin out now. I'm not actually sure what this particular yeah. one is. Yeah. How long is it then? They update like 0 0.12. Is it over a couple of months then? Oh yeah, it's it's been a long time coming. This one, um, yeah. waiting for it for a while. But we did have a little patch, uh, eleven point two, because of the UN UPnP error. Well, there's, there's another bug in the East one with the uh, activating best chain. That's that was an error as well. Yeah, well that's that's now been resolved. And I think thanks to my comment on the issue section, uh, Vladimir, very kindly. Uh, Resolve that so now we get access to the command line interface a lot quicker, which is fantastic. Um, and that's well, it, I think. Who keeps, updating, who keeps updating Bitcoin and everything if Satoshi's not doing anything? Well, this is the, the core developers. You've got about 30 odd people oh. who contribute, yeah. And this is what it is. Yeah, on the GitHub, yeah. Um, you know, and eventually I think you'll, well, I mean, not eventually, you could do it right now, but eventually you'll be able to go, go in there and post updates and report back because what the developers need is they need reports they need real world reports you know developer isn't just about coding it's also about user experience it's about um, testing the, the actual implementation because the coders can't have every single version of every single operating system in the world you know to test on so you can give them on the ground reports you know this is how it's working on a Raspberry Pi and I think that we should be sort of you know in charge of that part of Bitcoin's development you know making sure that it works on these legacy devices and these low-cost single board computers so anyone if you've got like an old laptop and you're thinking of putting Linux on it and you want to get the full node running uh, just drop us a line um, yeah. at, at Mr. Chris you know, Ellis Twitter, and so we can just get you help. Well you said I should encrypt my hard drive and get Ubuntu and that sort of thing yeah yeah, I mean, I kind of I prefer Linux Mint to Ubuntu because Ubuntu is kind of like the Windows now of Linux, um, but they're kind of sort of selling out quite a lot. But yeah, I mean, it's certainly better than Windows. So, well, I can just probably maybe just use this, use this normally for like Hangouts and that thing, and then use Raspberry Pi just for doing my stuff. Yeah, my Python stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I can connect remotely, which is quite cool. Yeah, you've got the VNC on yours, and you've got the. Um, I do. Yeah, that's and that's fantastic. Cool. And so. Okay, all you need to do is get the IP part IP scanner, put it in the PASI, start the VNC server within PASI, and then just connect to it through the VNC. But it does use a lot of energy, a lot of le not electric, but it uses a lot of power, doesn't it, for the full node? The CPU. Is what it yeah it uses a lot of the CPU cycles and so it slows down th you know slows things down quite a lot. But the joke every day when we overclocked, we get a human. Everybody yeah, we're all overclocked as the ADHD generation. Uh, we think a bit too quickly, but yeah. Um, so yeah, this was just a quick update. So is there anything else you guys wanted to add? Because I was just going to have this be a short short update really, and then we'll be on air tomorrow at eight o'clock in the morning anyway. So. Now that's it from me today. And, uh, thank you. Fantastic. Holly? Okay, mine's 37% um, now. Mine's 37%. You hear loads of, loads of police a lot. Like, wait, yeah, you know, I'm, in, you I'm in, a, in a particular busy road here. But um, yeah, okay, so that's great. So uh, you're going to have the latest version of Bitcoin then by tonight, and you're going to be ready for tomorrow. You're going to be helping a kid out in Thailand, hopefully, for Jana's. Uh, up and running and um, thanks very much for tuning in and, and staying tuned we want to try and give you Wait, as frequent it, it, updates it, as, as possible it's sun or something. no no it's it not a sun. sun no 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 it's not it's just a child yeah, I think it's a kid something related to the monastery there that they've got there in a, yeah. this monastery um, so I don't know I don't know who it's going to be it's going to be a nice surprise so let's see what he's uh, up, up into and um, thank you to everyone for uh, supporting us staying tuned uh, staying with us uh, without you we couldn't couldn't do this, and you can check out fullnode.protip.is, which will take you to the Git repo, and you can check out all the issues. And I will be adding some more tutorials as time moves on to get everyone started with with Jesse. You don't have to wait for me to officially release it if you're technical enough. You can just download the IMG, which I will provide you, and you can just update your full node, and I'll give full instructions for that. So yeah, thanks very much, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.